Welcome, everyone. We are so glad that you were able to join us today for our webinar on the DOD 8140. Um, sorry, the DOD Directive 8140. I apologize. Um, my name is Brandon Showers, and I am the Marketing and Events Coordinator here at New Horizons. We're so excited to have both Kevin McDonald and John Dun Dungeon with us today. Um, and I would like to be able to just give a brief introduction of both of them um, before we go ahead and get started. Kevin has dedicated 14 years of his career to working with CompTIA with a deep understanding of the field. He has specifically focused on the intelligence community within the DOD. John has a diverse background with 12 years of experience with CompTIA. And additionally, he spent five years working with ISC Squared further expanding his experience in this field. In this role, he has been able to, he's been responsible for managing policies related to the certifications and training programs that's set forth by the DOD, ensuring that the, the certifications that they have with CompTIA align with the standards set by the Department of Defense. Together, Kevin and John have created an incredible team within um, CompTIA that oversees all the policy matter regarding the certification and training programs. And we're so excited to be able to pull on their experience today as we discuss this very important matter. Um, so I wanna be able to thank them both for coming today. Before I turn the time over to them, I know that we have um, a lot of different people in this group that I wanna be able to get some different understanding as to where, what your relationship with is with this topic that we're discussing. So if you want to throw it inside the chat of saying, if you are military, if you're government, if you are civilian, what your um, relation to DOD 8140 is, that would be great. So we can get a better understanding of who we're really getting to work with today and discuss this topic with. So go ahead and throw it in the chat. Um, and Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Kevin. Hey, Brandon, thank you very much, and, and, and good day, everybody. We appreciate you dialing in for an update on the DOD 8140 directive. Um, and and uh, John, if you could if you could uh, share our slide deck, I sure can. Us, please hold on just a moment, folks. We're going to share my screen, and I'm going to pull up the presentation here. Some some of you uh, may seen? know. There we go. Okay. There we go. So some of you may know CompTIA well. Some of you may not know CompTIA at all. Just a very very quick overview. The Computing Technology Industry Association, CompTIA. Okay, we're we're the the global IT industries trade association. We do many many things to grow and develop and professionalize the IT industry. Uh, what you may know us best for and what many people know us best for are a line of IT certification uh, exams, tests uh, that we have had stretching back 30 years. Uh, this year, 2023, is the 30th anniversary of the publication of the very first version of CompTIA A+. That was our very first certification. It's still very, very popular today uh, as a, um, a, a required often or recommended certification for those who want to work in technical support. Uh, and then over the past 30 years, come out with many other very popular uh, certifications, including Network Plus, Security Plus, uh, and many others. Um, so uh, we, so un everybody understands, we're a trade association. Uh, we're a .org. Um, our certifications are vendor neutral, okay, not vendor specific. Uh, we focus many of our certifications at the foundational levels in technical support, network administration, cybersecurity, infrastructure generally, okay, uh, and more recently around big data and data analytics. We'll mention that before we finish our time uh, here in a little bit. Um, that's CompTIA. We've issued over 3 million certifications uh, over the past uh, 30 years. Um, that's about 170,000-ish uh, certs that we issue an annually now across our 14 different IT personnel certification uh, exams that we have. And for those who may be wondering, well, gee, just how big in the, here in the U.S., how big is the, is the tech employment? 
uh, it's over 9 million, about 9.4 million, uh, and grows most every year, regardless, almost regardless of what the general economy is doing. Okay. And without further ado, my colleague, John Mungin, to talk about 8570 to 8140. John? Yep. Thank you, Kevin. And you, you gave me an interesting data point there about um, how the job roles, particularly in cyber, have grown um, as, as CompTIA has grown over the years. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in, in a little bit different terms here. I'm going to be talking about vacancy, but uh, I'll get into that a little bit um, down the line on, on these PowerPoint slides. But hello, everybody. As my name is John Mungin, and uh, I get the opportunity to work with Kevin here every day. And we've been working on this 8570, 8140 policy stuff uh, since both of us um, were much younger. And uh, <laughs> glad to hear that uh, this has now finally hit the street, or at least partially hit the street. So I'm going to talk a little bit today just about the policy, uh, where we were, where we are, and what the future looks like. But um, to get us started, I think everybody on the call, if you, if you haven't, you might have been buried underground, but you have heard of 8570, the DOD 8570 directive that was put out um, more than 10, uh, about 10 years ago. And this policy was really created to help the Defense Department kind of identify, tag, track, and manage what at that time was called their IA workforce or their Information Assurance Workforce, cybersecurity. Um, there's a lot of different naming conventions that went into these career fields back then, but it really was set up so that DOD could establish baseline job roles and baseline skill sets within each of those job roles in cybersecurity. And as Kevin mentioned, um, the number of certifications we keep putting out every year grows, and the need for personnel uh, within these cybersecurity roles, IT roles, data roles, artificial intelligence roles, research roles, um, keeps getting bigger and bigger. And the Defense Department has identified the fact that um, they need a structured, manageable process to continually upskill people and make sure that they're qualified to sit in the role that they're in. So in a nutshell, there's there's a lot here about 8570, but really 80, the 8140 policy that just recently hit the street is an expansion uh, of the old 8570 policy. And if you think about 8570, um, sorry, let me go back a little bit here. I think everybody that's worked in the IT training or certification field has seen that DOD 8570 matrix. And each of those certification or each of those job roles or job buckets, as we like to call them over here at CompTIA, was specifically mapped to an IT certification, either one of ours or from another provider that ensured personnel that sat in that person in that job category were compliant with the requirements of the job by achieving an IT certification from uh, one of the cert bodies. And one of the things that came in there is that it wasn't open to all certification providers. Each of the certification providers in 8570 was required to be what's called ANSI ISO 17024 compliant, which is an audit process that we go through every year to ensure fairness and consistency across our certifications and allows the Defense Department to validate the quality of certifications that they're using to um, validate their personnel. So we've been, Kevin and I have been working in this bucket, as I said before, for a long time and uh, have really had a front row view of how they've evolved this policy into a new policy that just expands out that initial matrix and gets us into the new defense cyber workforce policy, or cyber workforce framework rather. I'm gonna to refer to that as the DCWF as I go through for this. And uh, let's get talking about that a little bit now. So in February of this year, on the 15th to be exact, um, the new 8140 manual uh, has come out. This is the Cyberspace Workforce Qualification and Management Program. I do invite you to use the hyperlink here in the slide if you want to go down the rabbit hole and start reading uh, the page that we have up here in the corner of the slide. It will take you through all the pieces of the, of the workforce framework, who it applies to, and the timelines. But in a nutshell, folks, um, the 8140 manual replaces the 8570 manual. And because as Kevin mentioned, IT has expanded and cybersecurity job roles have certainly expanded. Um, the Defense Department has gone from around 15 different categories up into 70 different job roles 
And each of these job roles has a specific coding number attached to it. And within that coding number will be KSAs, which are knowledge, skills, and abilities that are required for anybody that occupies that job role. Now, the challenge in front of DOD with this new policy is both um, providing the type of training and education that's needed for people getting into the role, validating the skills that they already have in the role, and then providing them some kind of pathway to get from the role they're currently in into a new role while managing and tracking all of this. And if you think about the Defense Department, cyber uh, personnel universe, if you will, this is, this is between 250 and 300,000 people uh, that are working either as a defense contractor, active duty personnel. Uh, maybe they work at one of the large systems integrators like a Lockheed Martin or a Northrop Grumman, and they're assigned to a DOD facility. All of this new policy circles around all of those personnel. So uh, it's quite a bit larger in scope and scale than the 8570, almost triple in size. And over the next three to five years, this is gonna impact upwards of 300,000 people. Um, so some of the slides I'm gonna go through here are supplied by DOD, just so you know that uh, uh, Kevin and I didn't have an opportunity to make this prettier in the CompTIA colors or anything. So uh, just a heads up with that, but really the uh, um, this has a three year plan for implementation starting this year. Um, and there's four primary goals here that the Defense Department wants to achieve in, in putting this framework out into the, into the public. Uh, the first one is to be able to identify uh, all of the personnel that fit into these job categories. And then after identification, be able to recruit uh, new personnel into these job, job categories by giving them some very specific structure on the things that they need to achieve before they can move into a particular job role and some boxes to check along the way to make sure that they're climbing the ladder in an appropriate way. Once they're in the role, the goal of the department is to develop folks in, in the role. That's gonna be through continuing ed on the job training, uh, environment specific training. For example, if you have a, a cadre of folks that are working at a defense department uh, facility and they're running on a Cisco backbone, they're probably gonna require some type of Cisco training like a CWNA. Uh, as they continue to upskill and develop the folks that sit in those buckets. And then ultimately they need to retain personnel uh, that stay in these positions. And this is a tremendous challenge at the Defense Department, given that between 75 and 85% of active duty personnel that enroll in the military punch out at the four year mark. So there is always a constant new stream of folks coming into DOD that have to get identi recruited, identified, developed, and then eventually given their duty assignment and getting to work. So this is the structure that DOD has rolled out for 8140 enables them to accurately track and manage this as they continue to build this workforce. And their goal here is to develop a cyber workforce that is the most capable and most dominant cyber workforce in the world. So we're pretty excited to work with them on that. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the kind of four goals here, identify, recruit, develop, and retain. Um, this is really the, the kind of the, the catalyst for this whole program so that they can get some structure around this. And um, I think that my own personal opinion here, this is indicative of the importance of a cyber workforce. Kevin and I get a lot of opportunities to sit through briefings to talk about strategy and mission. And we can't go to a single meeting where somebody doesn't say the, the primary threat uh, landscape for the Defense Department is cyber. It is not uh, tanks on battlefields. The, the primary concern is here in the cyber arena. That's where the next big war is going to be fought. Defense understands that they need to have the right kind of personnel in the right chair uh, to be able to provide defense during those and also provide offense when necessary. So that's really, uh, to me, this new structure is indicative of the importance of cyber workforce in the overall active duty personnel that are out there. So what's going to be the impact of this? Um, and I'm, I'm going to leave this up and not read this slide to you, but I want to put a couple of um, points of emphasis on the kind of bottom three circles and the big circle, if you will, cyber work at cyber enablers workforce, data AI workforce, and software engineering workforce. And I, I put the emphasis on these three because 
this wasn't in the original 8570 matrix. And if I'm talking about kind of the evolution of the cybersecurity job role and its importance, this kind of demonstrates that. So one of the opportunities for training companies that are out there is to start looking at these new job categories that are out there, particularly around data and AI um, and software engineering. Um, I could tell you, and or Kevin can tell you that uh, we don't currently have anything that sits in the AI bucket as far as AI development. And we also don't have a, a software engineering certification. And that's not to say something bad about CompTIA. It's just that these are new work roles that kind of demonstrate the evolution of the job role within cyber. And AI is, if you're on this call, you've been hearing about AI just as much as I have. Uh, DOD has implemented some AI tools that I'll talk a little bit about here, particularly how they relate to training. Um, but when you see that they're having separate and distinct career fields that sit in AI and software engineering, that to me demonstrates what's coming down the pipe over the next three to five years or 10 years. And uh, just can't seem to find enough people that, that sit in these jobs that are properly educated, qualified, certified, assessed. Um, and this still remains a big challenge for uh, DOD, particularly around the vacancy rates, um, which is a very big number that I'm going to get into a little bit here. So let's talk about that. What, what is vacancy rate, right? It, it's kind of a fancy term that the DOD likes to use, but essentially it means this is how many jobs we have available, and this is how many a percentage of those jobs that are unfilled. Um, so if you think about this, the way that the structure used to be at uh, for the entire U.S. government is almost everybody that worked in IT fell under what's called the 2210 occupational specialty category. So if you were a cybersecurity operator, you had a 2210 job code. If you worked in um, procurement for IT, you had a 2210 job role. If you hauled computers out of a building and put them on a truck, you were in the 2210 IT management job category. And when the defense department's looking at these job categories, they wanna figure out how many open positions do we have. And when they did that first assessment using the 8570 structure, they figured out that their occupancy or their vacancy rate in those jobs was about 24%. So uh, from an umbrella view, 24% of the jobs in the federal government that fell under that job category, they're just unfilled or someone had transferred to another job or moved on. But when they put out this new framework, they're able to really drill down into very specific job roles. And the results that they got out of that were, were almost staggering. Um, if you look at target network analysis, 78% of the jobs within the Defense Department are unfilled or they're filled with somebody that doesn't have the requisite skills for the role. Target developer, privacy compliance manager, 66% of the jobs uh, are currently vacant. Um, when we go down into cyber defense or for, forensics analyst, um, we have a certification around that called CYSA Plus that has had tremendous lift over at DOD as they try to close the skills gap between people that are in the job or close it further for people that are just coming into the service uh, to get them ready to go work as a cyber defense forensics analyst. A big challenge over at DOD, but uh, it really shows the critical need for new, qualified, trained, certified personnel to get into these job roles for the Defense Department. Tons of hiring gonna to be happening at DOD. Um, as I mentioned earlier in this, when we were talking about 8570, we were really looking at a very simple matrix. I think most of the stuff that was coming through for compliance was in that IAT one, two, or three bucket or the IAM one, two, and three bucket. And you'll see some overlap here in this chart where a lot of those job roles that you used to see before are now under cyber IT or just listed under cyber security. But if, I, if you would, for a moment, I'd like you to point your attention to the right side of the slide where it says data and AI and software engineering. All of the job roles that you see listed here are new job roles um, that DOD has not been tracking compliance or education for before the 8140 manual came out. These new job roles represent opportunity to sell training um, and certification courses were applicable to these new job roles. And it also presents a tremendous opportunity for our training channel and for the 
uh, CERT bodies that are out there trying to support DOD. Um, so this chart will be available uh, in the slide deck that we'll leave with Brandon here at the end, but I do invite you to go out and take a little look at the new job roles that are out there because they demonstrate um, what's coming down in the cyber workforce framework, and it's great to have yourself skilled up on, on what's coming down and, and how you can help. Um, oops, give me a second. There we go. Um, so let's talk about some of the benefits of this new policy that are out there. And the one that I kind of hit on a little bit before is that it leverages the framework of the structure that they put into the field for 8570 to help identify, track, and manage personnel. But it allows for each component, so the, the Marines can do one thing, the Navy can do another, to kind of customize training and certification and educational initiatives around their particular mission. So I could suspect the Navy might have some more stuff for ships and the Air Force might have more stuff for planes. Um, but it allows them to customize and not be locked into just one path to get compliance for this. Um, and it also allows them to kind of cross from one job role into another. You can integrate into different job roles um, with this new framework out there. So down here at the bottom, we're going to talk a little bit about um, kind of a role-based progression uh, is one of the components of this, but the one that I really want to focus on because I'm biased because I work at CompTIA is the verification of knowledge. They say verify, I say validate. Um, but at the end of the day, folks, when, when somebody comes in and goes to a training class or they go to, they take a semester at a community college, they take a, a vocational school course, uh, the Defense Department recognizes that it's impossible to validate or verify the knowledge of that particular person without some kind of test or assessment. And generally that's how certification has always fit in to the 8570, now 8140 matrix is that the Defense Department wants people trained, they want them qualified, they want them to have the latest information available. And then once they've completed that training, they wanna verify that that person knows what they're doing before they put them in the chair to defend our nation. And that's where certifications have always played a role and will continue to play a role in the 8140 matrix. Um, now there's going to be some other assessments that the Defense Department is taking a look at right now to assess whether somebody has completed a training course, is ready for the job, or in some cases to assess somebody that is already on the job if they have the requisite knowledge to continue being on the job. And we don't know just yet what those assessments will be if they come from DOD. We do know as this gets onto the ground right now, they will continue to use certification exams that are psychometrically validated as a way to ensure that folks that go through Security Plus training are Security Plus certified. And if that is one of the criteria for the job role, that checks the box for them uh, to start working. The other uh, thing I wanted to put a little bit of emphasis on is, um, they're shining a lot of light on continuous professional development, which dovetails really easily here with us here at CompTIA. We're very big believers in continuing education. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about continuing education options for folks out there. Um, but really this all comes from the same spirit uh, that we have here at CompTIA and at the Defense Department and is that we have a massive skills gap in the cybersecurity field. We still cannot find enough personnel uh, to get into the field. And for the folks that are in the field, the Defense Department and CompTIA and New Horizons needs these people to grow. We need them to take the next line up on the certification. We need them to compete continuing education. We need them to stay current on the threat landscape and the things that are happening out there every day. And we require it for our certifications, a certain number of continuing education units per certification must be achieved over a three-year period. And the Defense Department is also going to require that people continue to get certified and educated as they move up the job tree, if you will. And uh, we're, we're grateful that we have a partner in New Horizons who is offering continuing education and also alongside of CompTIA, encouraging people to not just get your Security Plus, but move on to your CYSA Plus which both satisfies the need for continued development and gets you a new certification and raises you up the uh, expert level, if you will. 
So a lot of emphasis on continuing ed and verification of the knowledge is here in the 8140 uh, document. And uh, we expect to get more information on that as the mapping document is published. Uh, all right. Let's go to the next slide. So I talked a little bit about how the Defense Department is not going to be relying exclusively on certification anymore, like it did with 8570. And to use their term, they're going to be opening the aperture to different ways that folks can go and get qualified and be in compliance with the new directive. And this will start, this is kind of the process as how it's going to go here through the next three to six months. Um, first, they're going to outreach to interested parties like CompTIA and some of the training companies and some of the educational providers, particularly through the NSA Centers of Academic es Excellence. Um, and all of these entities will have an opportunity to submit either their certifications, their degree programs, or their training programs over to this new AI engine that is at DOD. And what this AI engine does is it takes all of the knowledge, skills, and abilities for each particular job role, and it maps them against any particular training course, certification, or academic credential to ensure that the content within either the training course, cert, or academic credential maps to the knowledge, skills, and abilities that are particular to that job role above 70%. So in a very simple example, if you have a cyber operator jo job, they're going to measure Security Plus or CYSA against that job role's knowledge, skills, and abilities. And if the objectives of that certification cover more than 70% of the knowledge, skills, and abilities of the job, they will mark that certification as approved to be in compliance. And we're in that process uh, right now here at CompTIA with the Defense Department. We're actually helping them test their AI engine um, against some previous map work that they have done. If you guys think about the 8570 matrix, a lot of the CompTIA certifications were approved for those different personnel categories. And that process was really personnel driven, where the Defense Department personnel would audit our certifications and map them and make sure they covered the job role. Now this is all going to be done by the AI engine. And this will apply to training courses. This will apply to degree programs, community college degree programs, IT uh, certifications, not just ours, but other certification bodies. And when that map is published, everybody will be able to see the three to 10 different activities that personnel can take to make sure they're in compliance with their job role. So this is a great opportunity for the training community out there to start looking at these job roles and start looking at job role specific training that you may be able to offer, particularly around job codes where a certification isn't approved. There will be some of those in the new matrix that comes out and uh, also an opportunity to go out and be talking about uh, recertification, climbing up the certification ladder or continuing education. Um, speaking of continuing ed, uh, this is a great chart that Kevin and I have been using for years here that demonstrates um, all of the certifications that we had approved for the 8570 matrix. We expect to have all of these approved for the 8140 matrix alongside some other ones. Um, but each of them has a different level of CEUs that are required uh, to complete, uh, to maintain the certification. Uh, as I mentioned before, CompTIA, Kevin and I, uh, always encourage people um, to first consider going to the next certification up the pathway to solve to satisfy the CEU requirement. But if you're unable to do that, there's a variety of different ways that folks can go out and achieve continuing ed. Um, and I wanted to put a lot of focus on that because um, DOD is going to require that certifications are uh, current when they uh, are used for compliance out there. And that includes continuing ed. So if we have somebody that has a Security Plus certification and they're working as a cyber operator in a security operations center, and they're not going on to their CYSA Plus or their Pen Test Plus with CompTIA, they still need to maintain their 50 CEUs to keep their Security Plus current. Um, and folks can get these CEUs by going to a training course at like a New Horizons Center or a conference or an online course. 
They can attend live webinars and submit those for continuing ed. Just need a certificate of completion or attendance to submit that. Um, attending a conference where oftentimes at these conferences, we have breakout sessions that give you automatic CEUs like through AFSIA or some of the other conference companies that, that we participate in. Um, those are always available, oftentimes for free. Um, completing a college course, if it maps to your job role and the certification, uh, also gets you continuing eds. And uh, um, the American Council on Education course or ACE courses also count as continuing ed. If you're looking for continuing ed stuff uh, for our CompTIA certifications, we have those on our website. Um, but I wanted to put some emphasis on this because DOD has put a ton of emphasis on this and, and finds it imperative that folks not just get certified or not just get their degree, but they continue um, growing, continue with knowledge acquisition. Because uh, if you'll remember a couple few slides ago, we still got 60, 70 percent vacancy rates in some of these job roles. Uh, and Um, so go that I talked about earlier to come out either late this summer or this fall. Um, within the mapping document, each of the knowledge, skills, and abilities for each job role will be published. Uh, with, that's already published, but what more importantly will be published is um, what counts for what. What certifications will count for a particular job role? What academic credentials will count for compliance in the job role? What training courses can personnel take to make sure they're in compliance with 8140? All that's going to be detailed out for all of us uh, here late summer, early fall. And, and then Kevin and I and Tara, uh, of course, will probably be doing some more webinars on this. I'd love to do one with New Horizons as well, where we're going to go through uh, the nitty gritty, if you will, on which CompTIA certifications apply to which job role, how to best get those certifications, and the pathways that kind of come along with career growth related to our certifications. Um, speaking of pathways, giving myself a great segue, uh, if you haven't heard of our pathways here at CompTIA, we have three different path pathways, which is new. Uh, we used to only have two. The first one is an infrastructure pathway, which relates to a lot of the job roles in the new DCWF 8140 matrix, uh, A plus, Net plus, Server plus, Linux plus, and Security plus, all still fit into an infrastructure pathway along with Cloud plus, and uh, the cybersecurity pathway, which is one of our more popular ones, um, A plus, Net plus, Security plus, and then the, the pivot point for folks that want to work red team, blue team, into either, to either CISA or pen test. We love folks to go get both of those certifications and work on the purple team, if you will. And then lastly, in our uh, cybersecurity pathway is our mastery level certification, CASP+. And there's some changes coming up with that one, so stay tuned. And then, as I mentioned, we used to have two, and now we have three. We have a new pathway uh, that sits around data and analytics. And if you remember back earlier when I was pointing to the chart about the new areas of emphasis for DOD, data was one of them. And CompTIA is happy to report we have one cert in the market now and another one coming out very soon and then another one coming out next year, which will provide a laddered structured approach to data analytics and data systems and data science so that somebody that's working in cyber can also tie in some data skills uh, alongside of their cyber career. And that's one of the reasons that DOD has been putting such an emphasis on data. Um, for anybody that's on the call today, if you work in a SOC or the Security Operations Center, a good part of your daily activities are raw, revolve around SOC audits, and a lot of those SOC audits are data heavy and involve data modeling and data presentation. And we've seen a lot of lift here at CompTIA on the data pathways, particularly as they relate to cybersecurity careers. So just a little nugget there for uh, you out there wondering why we're doing data and why we've created another pathway, that is, uh, like all of our certifications, based on a global job task analysis where CompTIA um, surveys and measures the job uh, skills, knowledge, and abilities needed for every job role out there, and our certifications are written around the current skills that people need in today's landscape. So 
Um, that's why our certifications update every three years. And that's why they change all the time is because the threat landscape always is a kind of constantly evolving thing. Um, part of that uh, that I mentioned is the Data Plus certification, which has been on the street now, and we're seeing this get more and more popular over at DOD. For the reasons that I mentioned, it includes data mining, data analysis, visualization, data concepts and environments, and then governance, quality, and controls. Uh, for folks that are looking to um, have a more robust or rounded out skill set in the cyber field or just regular data analytics, if folks want to work as a data scientist or an operations analyst, um, Data Plus has proven to be one of the certifications that kind of meets all the knowledge, skills, and ability of those particular job roles. As I mentioned, we'll have another one coming out a little later this year and a third one coming out in the data pathway um, next year. Um, and then next, I want to talk um, just very quickly about the CompTIA CYSA Plus exam, which is slated for release very soon, uh, a couple of weeks, that's going to be coming out. And we put this certification out there, um, I guess, about five years ago, and uh, six years ago. And it was kind of in, in co I want to say in cooperation, but we caught the advice of the Defense Department, and they really talked to us about security analytics, about behavioral analytics, about real-time threat monitoring, and some kind of psychometrically validated certification tests that could kind of bolt onto those skill sets. And that, along with our global job task analysis, kind of was the catalyst for us to stand this certification up. And this certification is our fastest growing certification uh, that we have here at CompTIA. And it's really designed to help people detect and analyze indicators of malicious activity. In simple terms, that means they want to be able to look at the landscape and tell when something's wrong and prevent it. Um, so it also works a little bit on incident response, which is always a very big deal in security operations centers, and then understanding the reporting and communication concepts that go around vulnerability management and incident response activities. That's a very fancy way of saying we need to train up our cyber workers to be able to speak to senior management in language that they can understand about the critical need for protection of your environment. Um, some of the job roles you, you see out there for the CompTIA CYSA Plus are security analyst, as I mentioned, the SOC analyst or a SOC operator. Um, incident response analysts are very big for the CYSA Plus certification um, and a few others here. Threat Hunter is a just a cool name. It's kind of sexy. I'm a threat hunter for DOD. I don't know. That would be awesome. Um, but uh, these are some of the job roles that you'll see out there for the CYSA Plus certification. Because of that global job task analysis and a rapidly evolving threat environment, um, about 20% of the exam, exam updates were updated uh, to include more on threat intelligence, cloud and mobile, and uh, some of the updated tools that have come out since the last um, iteration of the exam hit the street. So all of this is happening as you and as I talk and you listen, uh, but that new certification that will be approved by DOD in the new DCWF framework uh, is about to hit the street. I mentioned that in particular because some of the questions that we're getting over here from active duty personnel or salespeople in our training channel or folks that work with systems integrators is, you know, what do I do nowadays if I've already got the Security Plus or the CYSA Plus certification? Um, is there something more I need to do? And the answer is no. Uh, if you have your certification or if there's folks on this call that are going to get your certification, please continue to do so. Certification will remain one of the compliance measures for the 8140 manual. And if you are a personnel who is working in the Defense Department through whatever angle, uh, and you have your certification that maps to your job role, you're in good shape. Um, you'll still need to keep up your continuing ed or move up to another certification um, to keep that continuing ed or keep the certification valid. But um, those folks that have a certification already and they're in the job role already at Defense Department will be grandfathered in to the new 8140 initiative and will still be seen as compliant. Um, the CYSA exam, uh, we've changed it, uh, actually condensed it a little bit from five domains to four, just rearranging a little bit of this and have gone from 15 of exam, exam objectives uh, to 21. So 
80% of the topics are similar, but the job role and the tasks needed for that job role um, have changed by, by 20% over the last couple of years. Um, here's a quick snapshot of the domains that we have changed for all of us that like to go down the rabbit hole on this stuff. What's very interesting to me is that uh, security operations is now uh, a full third of the exam um, because that's what the job calls for. So with that, uh, I think I've run myself hoarse a little bit here, and I'd like to kick this back over to you, Kevin and Brandon, to see if we had any questions come in through the chat while I was talking there. Yeah, that was great, John. Thank you very much. Brandon, I don't see any questions in the chat. Do you? I do not either, but we are open to any questions you may have. You can come off of your mic if you'd like, or you can put it into the chat. Um, we have some time for questions. Now, if we don't get any questions, look, Kevin and Brandon, that means we did really well. Right? <laughs> <laughs> So, John, we understand from DOD CIO to look in July, August timeframe for the publication of the qualification matrices portion yes. of the 8140 directive information. Yes, we all wait with bated breath. Uh, I, I think our entire training channel here at CompT is most anxious for that document. I know we are, too. Um, that I, I think if uh, folks are out in the field nowadays, it would behoove, behoove you to go to any of the Defense Department breakout sessions where they're talking about this workforce framework. Kevin and I have been fortunate enough to attend a couple of them and, and, and gather verbal um, confirmation that cert certifications will still play a major role in the matrix. But um, to expand out what we said before, they're opening the aperture to a bunch of different ways that folks can now get qualified, certified, educated, and ready for these particular job roles. So I, I think it represents a lot of opportunity for our training channel uh, to start looking at courses that fit these job roles. And it represents some great opportunity for the CERT bodies uh, to continue to support DOD and help them validate the skill sets of folks uh, that are doing these mission critical jobs. Dan Curran here, John. How's it going, man? Hey, Long Dan. Time. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, um, you know, just thinking in the mindset of our DOD leaders, uh, they're going to want something quick, down, and dirty. I mean, if if an airman or if a soldier or a, a sailor already has a degree, then that's something else. But, I mean, as far as checking the box, what is it that's going to get me to that you know, box checker the quickest, I think that the, uh, that's where the, the mapping is going to be critical, you know, so I agree. I think that the tendency, unless somebody walks in with a four-year cyber degree or data science degree or something like that, I think that, you know, they want the quick down and dirty. I think they're going to be pushing still just as hard for getting the certs as, yeah. uh, as they ever have. That's what we've heard too, Dan. And, and Dan, I know you've worked in the military for a long time and one of the things that I always like to say about the military is their their favorite path is a straight line. And uh, the easiest path, simplest path, and the path that's already been established that they've already put tens of thousands of personnel through is certifications. Um, I think they've got a little heavier lift on some of these academic credentials. And I think they have an, an even greater lift on validating training um, because training can be customized in a whole bunch of different ways. and um, I don't think that they're there yet on um, being able to start accurately validating training. I believe when this uh, um, map is published, they will have that process set up. Um, but um, I think this is a tremendous opportunity for the training community and for the CERT community, if only for the first data point, which is that DOD 8570 was around 100,000 personnel and DOD 8140 is around 300,000 personnel. And there's a lot of different job categories that cert bodies don't cover. There's going to have to be picked up by the custom training community. Yeah, I know that. Uh, has, have you guys heard anything about, um, you know, where the uh, uh, computing environment certification is headed? Has there been much conversations in your guys' space on that? Nope, I haven't heard much about that. I'm, I'm as anxious for it as you are. 
I got it. I know that uh, uh, Jim Bristler from Cisco was talking to Patrick or whatever the guy's name is. And yeah. it's all about the mapping. You know, everybody's <laughs> waiting for the mapping. Everybody. You know, what's going to map over? We had uh, um, Matt and Patrick at a breakout session at an FC event a couple of few weeks ago. And I was, I was concerned they were going to get tackled in the hallway. Uh, there were so many people out there asking them, where's that mapping document? <laughs> they should have put one of those sandwich boards on their chest that said, I don't have the mapping document yet. See me in three months. <laughs> I'm going to create one and just post it on LinkedIn and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's the new roadmap. Right? It, can only, it, it can only be New Horizons. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's the entire New Horizons course catalog just mapped to the DCWF. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Cornering the market. Yep. Well, thank you, everybody. We really appreciate you getting time, uh, spending some time with us today. Um, if you have any questions that kind of pop up after you've heard Kevin and I talk here and you want to ding one of us directly, feel free to do so. Uh, we're always here to help the New Horizons Network as one of our biggest partners and long-term partners here at CompTIA. And we really appreciate you getting us together with us today and letting us talk about what we know so far and how this all kind of fits together. I hope that explained it to a degree uh, different than just reading the policy document. But again, don't hesitate to just ding us if you have any questions. Yeah, the policy document, you go into it, was it 30 pages long? And then you have like 5,000 references to other documents. I mean, those right. are wormholes that like you go from one to the next to the next. I think I went five or six deep and I'm like, uh, I need to take like PTO for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, we, we, and we, we, in closing, we can also mention if anybody's got time and resources right now and say, hey, we, I, I've got people, I, we want to do compliance now, continue with the 8570. Yeah, great, great. get them a cert, they'll be okay. Yep, yep. And do what you've been doing for all these years, you'll be fine. John, we did have one more question in the chat. Um, it says, do we have to pay different prices to renew for the different certifications? So I'm wondering if we may need a little bit more information from Numaya. Um, Numaya, if you want to come off your, of your, if you does, want to does, does, does Maya mean if, if someone holds multiple CompTIA certifications? Is that? I'm not sure. Numaya, what are your thoughts? I can answer generally if an individual holds multiple CompTIA certifications and is looking to renew, they only have to focus on the most complex yeah, of those certs. One. And I'm speaking generally now because there are exceptions to this. But if someone holds an A plus, network plus, and security plus, they only need to pay for in our continuing education program their security plus certification and That's as long as they renew and extend their security plus at the same time it also automatically renews underneath it their network plus and their a plus and no in that instant in that example they do not have to pay additional money annually for their network plus and their a plus so just in that just the security plus going down that that path if i hold you know the next step for casp has always been like the cissp right so if I go out and I acquire a CISSP, I still, because it's a different agency, I still need to pay for and main, at least pay for my uh, C, uh, continuing education or continue my whatever it is for, for CASP. I've got to I've got to make sure I make my payment every three years for that. Although everything I do to maintain my CISSP, that's it. As long as I maintain my CISSP, my CASP, as far as CEUs, will still remain intact as That's long as I, I continue paying for it. That's correct. You don't need to do CEUs for CISSP and do CEUs separately for CISP. The CEUs for CISSP satisfy the CEU requirement. You just have to pay the maintenance fee. Got it. Just wanted to make sure that there's still the, uh, the thing. Sounds like a veteran. <laughs> you identify yourself, Dan, when you know that, because that's, that's way down at the bottom of the details. <laughs> so it's scary because it wasn't that far after CompTIA released the uh, A plus that I started here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
you date yourself, Dan. Oh yeah, it's the only, I'm the only person who will date me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm keeping that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you guys doing this. Uh, certainly, um, I know you guys have been, you know, tied to the hip with uh, what was the what was the original agency that was? I thought it was like DIAP or something like yeah, that. Yeah, DIAP. Yeah, they, they, Defense they, Information they, Secure Pro, so, so, IA so now, Program Office. Yeah. So Beaver now it all there. falls under the uh, the uh, DoD CIO yeah. office. It's all under DoD CIO, and that Patrick guy, Patrick Johnson, that you mentioned, is one of the leads. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's been a, he's been a good resource over the years. Oh, here's something I forgot to say that my boss reminded me to say, and I forgot anyway. Um, we're going to have the DoD 8140 people, uh, all the policy people at our partner summit this summer. It's coming up April 2nd and 3rd. And we're going to do August, this, uh, not April. Don't go. Don't go in April. August 2nd and 3rd in Las Vegas. Um, if you Ooh. search CompTIA Partner Summit, you'll see all the information about that. But we do invite you to come out, uh, not just hear it from me and Kevin, but hear it directly from Matt and Patrick at DOD with their charts. We're hopeful, I'm putting a lot of word on the word hopeful, that they could do us a solid and like show up at the Partner Summit and say, by the way, today's the day we're going to publish the mapping document, so we might as well show it to you here. Um, but either way, if you have folks on your teams, um, that would be served by hearing that info briefing directly from DOD. They will be at our partner summit uh, August 2nd and 3rd. That's in Las Vegas. If someone here needs a registration code so you can get around the registration fee, you can ding Kevin and I and we can send out a code so you don't have to pay to go. Um, but we will have that presentation from DOD at the conference. Nice. Well, I so appreciate um Kevin and John and all of their effort that they've been able to put into preparing for this webinar. If you want to throw a little um, reaction, a little applause in, um, in Zoom for them, that would be great. We so appreciate them and everything that they've been able to do for us. Um, I will just share my screen just real fast um, in closing that, like um, Kevin and John said, you're welcome to reach out to them with individual questions. Their emails are up there on the screen. Also, you are welcome to follow New Horizons on LinkedIn. There's a QR code that will go straight to the New Horizons LinkedIn page. And you can continue to get updates as we release more webinars and get more updates on DOD 8140 and all of this. So. Um, we are so grateful that you've been all able to attend, and we hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Once you leave this webinar, there will be just a one-question survey asking, would you like to continue the conversation? That just means if you're interested in learning more about how New, New Horizons can support you in your learning journey and your development, we can connect you with the right people. Just go ahead and press yes on that survey and we can go ahead and do so. So once again, thank you all for coming and um, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.